الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين وإمام المتقين وعلى آله وأصحابه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل يا عبادي الذين أسرفوا على أنفسهم لا تقلقوا من رحمة الله إن الله يغفر الذنوب جميعا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم وقال سبحانه وتعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا توبوا إلى الله توبة نصوحا وعن أنس رضي الله تعالى عنه عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول قال الله عز وجل جلاله وعم نواله يا ابن آدم إنك ما دعوتني ورجوتني غفرت لك على ما كان فيك ولا أبالي يا ابن آدم لو بلغت ذنوبك عنان السماء ثم استغفرتني غفرت لك ولا أبالي يا ابن آدم إنك لو لقيتني بقراب الأرض خطايا ثم لقيتني لا تشرك بي شيئا لأتيتك بقرابها مغفرة أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام رب شرحني صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم يا رب العالمين زدنا علما بالقرآن العظيم وبسنة رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم الحمد لله First and foremost, my much thanks and appreciation goes to your respected Hafiz Sahib and Imam Sahib and all those associated with the Masjid for giving me this opportunity to speak to you on a very blessed night indeed. May Allah Ta'ala accept your good thoughts and Allah allow me so that through your good thoughts Allah allow me to say words that are beneficial for every single person listening. Before continuing on, I want me and you both to practice upon a very beautiful sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It comes in a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that whenever Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to speak, then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's companions, the Sahaba radiyallahu ta'ala anhum, one companion mentions, if you, were to, if you were to bring a cloth and if you were to place it on top of all those sitting in the gathering of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it would be very difficult to find any dips or holes in that cloth because the companions used to sit so close to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so they could benefit with, to its maximumness. So my first request and only request for today, tonight will be that before I say any more, I humbly request that come closer, please. Jazakallah khairan, ahsan al jazak. May Allah reward you well. Jazakallah khairan. MashaAllah. Allah blesses us all that we are acting upon a sunnah of a gathering of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa When you will come close, I have a very important message to tell everyone. The message that I want to say to every single person here today is that every single person, everyone, every single person sitting here tonight is very special and every person listening online and listening on the masjid receiver Every single person is special. Even our uncles and our dadas and our chachas that don't understand English, they are also very, very special by sitting in this gathering. May Allah Ta'ala accept them for sitting. Allah Ta'ala, under Sasa, Dadaira, Allah Khub Rakad Nisib Harta. Allah Ta'ala, Tarad Khubul Harta. Tarad Nautum Mayar Shate Boisun. Tarad Zanra. That he lecture English Zubano Ibo. تبا ترى بويسون دن يخر الله بهود خاص رحمة الله تل ترى بوار يقبول خرطة ترى دوام دار رفتخته الله ترى زندقيت بركوت ديتا ترى توجه من رفتخته 
May Allah Ta'ala accept our elders for sitting. You see, it's very important. For example, if I was to sit in a gathering and it was of Spanish or French and I don't understand Spanish or French, to sit there, very difficult. Imagine one of us sitting in a Bengali bayan when the sheikh comes from Bangladesh and we find it so hard to understand. It gets so difficult to sit down. But for them to sit here, it is a great blessing of Allah. So we should say Alhamdulillah on their behalf also. So say Alhamdulillah. What I wanted to say to you all is, every single person sitting here is very, very special. Very special. And this statement of mine that you are very special, everyone, me sitting here, I am very special. Every single person sitting here is very, very special. And this statement, I will back it up with a very beautiful hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. This hadith is narrated by Imam Bukhari rahimahullah ta'ala. He narrates from his teachers until he comes to Abu Huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, who was that companion from whom we have received the most hadith. Alhamdulillah. Abu Huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, through him we have received the very beautiful sayings and actions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Abu Huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu says that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. What did Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say? He said, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has angels. Inna lillahi malaikatan yatufuna fi turuk. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has angels, and there are this certain type of angels that their only job, only job is to roam around the streets in the world. They go through alleyways, they go through streets, they go through cities, towns, pathways. What's their job? Yaltamisuna ahla dhikr. They look for gatherings, they look for places where people have gathered together to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So alhamdulillah, everyone sitting here today knows that they received a message or Imam Sab, respected Imam Sab made an ilan that there's going to be a talk today. So everyone sat down. You, you know it's going to be about Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa That's why you sat down. So the angels, they look, فَإِذَا wajadu qawma. They find a group of people. So right now the angels, they have found Ashton Jamia Masjid, Maghrib Salah 916, 917. After Maghrib Salah, on the 15th night of Sha'ban, there's a few people gathering in Ashton Jamia Masjid. So they gather. What do they say? They say, يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ عَزَّ وَجَلْ They find people remembering Allah. That's why we have gathered to remember Allah. Tanadaw. They call out to each other, Halummu, Halummu ila hajatikum. Halummu, Halummu ila hajatikum. Oh angels, come. We found it. We found a place. We have found a place where people are sitting and they're going to remember Allah. We found this place. Come, come. The angels come and they gather. When these angels gather, they continue to gather, gather, gather until they reach the heavens. Until they reach the sky. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is the all-knowing, He knows everything, but He wants to have a conversation with His angels. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَا يَقُولُ ibadi." O oh, angels, what are my servants doing? What are they doing? So the angels say, Ya Rabbi, يَقُولُونَ يُسَبِّحُونَكْ وَيُمَجِّدُونَكْ وَيُكَبِّرُونَكْ وَيَحْمَدُونَكْ O oh, Allah, they have gathered, they are going to be remembering you. They are going to be doing tawbah, repentance. They are going to be praising you. They are going to glorify you. That's it. That's why they've gathered. Now listen to this conversation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to his angels, Hal ra'awni? Have they seen me? Have these people ever seen me? Has anyone here seen Allah ta'ala? Have you seen Allah ta'ala? No. So Allah asks, Hal ra'awni? Have they seen me? La wallahi ya Rabbi. Oh my Allah, they haven't seen you. They have never seen you. La, la ma ra'uka ya Allah. They have never seen you. They don't. Allah says, Wa kaifa law ra'awni. How would they change if they did see me? What would they do? The angels reply, Ya Allah, if they did see you, law ra'uka kanu ashadda laka maghfira. Ashadda laka ghafara. Oh Allah, if they did actually see you, 
they'll be spending 24 hours in a day trying to praise you. They'll be spending their whole life trying to find these gatherings where people will gather and remember Allah. They will not make just 15th of Sha'ban the special night. Jumwa special. Every day of Ramadan special. Every dars of Quran special. Every dars of Hadith special. Every opportunity they would take it and they will go grab it and they will sit in that gathering. If they saw you, Allah. They will want to gather just to remember you. Then Allah says, Ma yas'alunani. What do they want from me? They have gathered, what do they want? The angels reply, Yaqulun, Ya Rabbi, yas'alunaka al-jannah. Oh Allah, they just want jannah from you. That's what they want. They don't want to live a life where you are going to punish them. They just want jannah. Hal ra'awha? Have they seen Jannah? Have they seen the blessings I have kept for them? La wallahi ya Rabbi. Oh Allah. They haven't seen it. They haven't seen Jannah. They still believe, yes. You have said in the Quran, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa has said in Hadith, there is Jannah, there is the blessings of Jannah. They believe. Allah says, Kayfa law ra'awha? If they saw Jannah, what would they do different? The angels say, Oh Allah, if they actually saw Jannah, they will not make any opportunity to go to miss, but that they will be asking you, Ya Allah, inna nas'aluka al-jannah, inna nas'aluka al-jannah, inna nas'aluka al-jannah. Oh Allah, give us Jannah, give us Jannah, give us Jannah, give us Jannah. They won't stop asking from you. Then Allah says, Thumma mimma yata'awwadhun. What is it that they don't want? What is it that they're really scared of? That they don't want to go to this evil place, that this place where they will be punished. Ya Rabbi, Annar. They don't want to go burn in the fire of hell. I don't want to burn in the fire of hell. No one wants to burn in the fire of hell. Not even for a split second. I don't want to be punished by Allah. You don't want to be punished by Allah. No one wants to go to Jahannam. No one wants to go to hell. Hal Rauha, have they seen this hell? Have they seen, have they felt this punishment? La wallahi ya Rabbi. No, they haven't seen it. And they still believe, they still are scared of this Jahannam. If they did see, what would they change? The angels say, oh Allah, the way they will be asking for Jannah 24-7, in that very same way they will be saying, oh Allah, wa na'udhu bika minan nar, wa na'udhu bika minan nar. Save us from the hellfire, save us from the hellfire, save us from the hellfire. They wouldn't stop asking protection from the fire of hell. Now it gets exciting. Guess what Allah says now? This conversation has taken place. Allah says to his malaika, فَأُشْهِدُكُمْ Oh my angels, I make you witness. Allah says, فَأُشْهِدُكُمْ I make you witness. And now this for every single person. فَأُشْهِدُكُمْ أَنِّي غَفَرْتُ لَهُمْ The I Allah I have forgiven every single person sitting in that gathering. I've forgiven them. No problem. Forgiven. But it's not as simple as that. One angel. <laughs> no, no, no. Not as simple as that, Allah. No, no, no. Fihim fulanun. Amongst them there is one person. Falaisa minhum. He didn't come for a bayan. He didn't come to remember you. He didn't come for 15th of Sha'ban, blessed night. No. Someone said to him, Oh, Musidai, Musidai, come to the mosque, come to the mosque. That's why he came. He didn't come to remember. He didn't care who the speaker is. He didn't care there was a bayan after my grip. He didn't come for that. He just came because someone dragged him along. What about him, Allah? He didn't come for that reason. What about that guy? What about that guy that just came? He just thought, you know what? Oh, let's just go. 15th of Sha'aban, Shubay Berat, Shubay Berat. Let me just go to the mosque. What about him? He didn't want to come. He just ended up coming. What about him? Listen to what Allah says. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, regarding that person, Allah says, Humul Julasa. Such is this gathering. La yashqa bihim jalisuhum. That not one person is going to leave this gathering, but that he is also forgiven by me. Even that person. Even that person who didn't want to come. Even he is forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now that's a statement. That's a statement. Ya Allah. 
just by sitting in this gathering if we weren't if we were not to discuss anything for the next half an hour for the next 30 minutes 40 minutes just that much that you have gathered for the sake of Allah that was enough for Allah's mercy to descend that was enough for Allah to say ghafartu lahum i have forgiven them i have had mercy upon them so if we have gained anything from this moment on know that right now you're in a very very good position with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala very very good position the ulama differ that maybe is it every sin or is it just the small sins so some ulama give the commentary that if you are so sincere that I'm going to sit and I'm going to change my life tonight you know what that's enough all year went what did I do Sha'ban's year 15th of Sha'ban only 15 days before Ramadan you know what today is the night Saturday 21st May today I'm going to change if there is anyone sitting with this intention, have hope in Allah, not only your minor sins, even your major sins have been forgiven just by sitting. Just by sitting. Now let's talk about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know when we do something wrong with our parents, we do something wrong. You know, you messed about in school, you messed about in college, and parents are angry. Why do you do this for? How dare you do this? How dare you do that? You're so naughty. You're so bad. And you know, when our parents are really angry and we've done something really bad, you know, something where, you know, we've hurt their honor. Someone has said, oh, your son does this. Oh, your daughter does this. And our parents are really angry. Oh, I saw your son. Mm, he was with these people. Oh, your daughter. Is that your daughter? Oh, yes, yes. She was doing this. And this goes to our parents. It really hurts, first of all. It really hurts our parents. And because of that hurt, they say certain things. And sometimes they say, How dare you do this? How dare you do this? Get out of my house. I'm going to go to Nibara. Get out of my house. Get out of my house. Automatically, connection broken. That you're not my son anymore. You're not my son. You're not my daughter anymore. Why? Because you've done something wrong. So wrong that you've hurt them so much that they want to destroy their association. They don't want to know you anymore. And sometimes some parents, they mean it. But get out of my house. I never want to see you. You've done this wrong. I never want to know about you. You've done a lot of wrong. And that's what happens. So at that moment, our parents, who are the most beloved to us, if anyone loves you in this world dearly, I swear by Allah, it is our parents. It is our parents that love us dearly. But when the crunch comes, when you've done really wrong, you've done so much wrong, at that moment, tu yamar fuwa nai. Tu yamar furi nai. You're not my daughter, you're not my son. How dare you do this? Love everything finished. Because of this one, two sins, one, two wrongs, we've done everything finished. That's our parents. Now let's understand with Allah Ta'ala that okay, all year I've sinned. Ya Allah, I haven't been praying namaz. I haven't been praying salah all year. I just come for Jummah. Sometimes I miss Jummah. I don't pray salah. No, I'm doing this, that. I'm in a haram, haram relationship. I do this, I do that in my spare time. I'm doing this, but I'm doing that. So we've gone really far from Allah. That's the reality. I will sit here and I say about myself, I don't know the state of anyone else. But Wallahi lazim, I am sitting in the house of Allah and my state, I feel personally, I know myself that I am also very far from Allah Ta'ala. I have a lot of work to do to become close to Allah. So this is my state. I don't know about anyone else's state, but I can speak on my own behalf and I can speak to you with this. That we are very far from Allah Ta'ala. So we've done a lot of wrong, a lot of wrong. So we've done wrong, now we need to know that that creator Allah, how is he going to speak to me? I've done wrong. You know when Allah speaks in the Quran, Allah says, for example, Ya ayyuhan nas, O people. Allah wants to address the people, O people. Allah wants to speak to the people that believe. Ya ayyuhan ladhina amanu. O you who believe. Allah has a command. O you who believe. Ya ayyuhan ladhina amanu. كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الصِّيَامُ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ The all you who believe, 
Fasting has become prescribed upon you the way it was for the people of the past. Other verses. Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu ittakullah. O you who believe, fear Allah. Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu kunu tawwabin. O you who believe, become repentant. That's fine. Allah says, O you who believe. But what about me and you, those that have actually gone far from Allah? How does Allah address me and you? Parents address us saying, I don't want to know you, you're not my child. Listen very carefully what Allah says. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O oh Muhammad, O oh my beloved Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, I want you to speak to those servants of mine that have gone very far, very far. They don't pray salah, they neglect every command of mine, they've gone very far. So how will Allah address these people? Will Allah say, Oh you sinners! Oh you sinners! Or will Allah say, Oh you who have transgressed! Or will Allah say, Oh you people who have done wrong after wrong after wrong! What will Allah say? Listen very carefully to what Allah says. To me and you, Allah says, Ya ibadi. O oh my servant, O oh my servants, I have done wrong, we have done wrong. After that Allah says, O oh Muhammad, say to them, Ya ibadi, O oh my servants. So Allah is addressing us, the bad, the sinners, O oh my servants. Ya ibadi alladheena asrafu ala anfusihim, O oh you my servants, my servants, who have gone very far from me, who have done so much wrong, they have wronged so much that it's not about oppressing others anymore. They have wronged so much, they are oppressing themselves now. They have gone that far from me. Oh my servants, Ya Ibadi. You know when your mother loves you and your father loves you and they're really happy. You did well in GCSEs. Oh Amar Foot. Oh Amar Foot yeah GCSE Fashkor Soin. Amar food. Amar five fashkor soin college exam. Amar furie fashkor soin university exam. Amar furi. Amar fwa. So much love. It's, it's my daughter, it's my child that did well. And that's when our parents are happy with us. That Allah, who in reality is not happy with us, at that moment he says, Ya ibadi, O oh my servants. O oh, Amar gulam. Ya ibadi. الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ Now what's the message? Allah says, لَا تَقْنَتُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ Do not ever become despondent in the mercy of Allah. Do not ever lose hope. Why? إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا Allah is the one who forgives every single sin. Allah forgives everything. Why? إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Because Allah is the one who is the most merciful. Who is the most forgiving? This is why Allah says to me and you that you are my servant. You're still my servant. You're still my servant. There is an example written in the books of the pious predecessors. The name of the scholar is Sheikh Shibli, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. Sheikh Shibli, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he writes that once I went for Umrah, I went for Umrah to visit the house of Allah. When I went to visit the house of Allah, I went for Umrah. I, I finished my tawaf. You go around the house of Allah seven times. I finished my tawaf. After finishing my tawaf, I was standing next to Maqam Ibrahim, where people will offer two rakats of nafal salah after the tawaf. So I was standing there because Sheikh Shibli, rahimahullah, was very close to Allah. Allah sometimes opens certain doors that only the close servants of Allah can understand. So Sheikh Shibli, he can hear that there is a man doing tawaf saying Labbaik ya Rabbi Labbaik, 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 La Sharika Labbaik Oh Allah, he's doing tawaf Oh Allah, I am here Oh Allah, I am here Oh Allah, I am here Sheikh Shibli hears this He can hear there is a voice Someone in the gathering saying Oh Allah, I am here Oh Allah, I am here Now listen to this Sheikh Shibli rahimahullah he hears a response. He hears another voice saying, La labbaik. La labbaik. Your labbaik is not accepted. You're saying to me that I am here, oh Allah, I am here, oh Allah, is not accepted. So Sheikh Shibli, 
I can hear both. The person says, Labbaik Allah, Labbaik Allah. And a voice says, La Labbaik. No, no Labbaik for you. Your Labbaik here is not accepted. You are not accepted in my court. So Sheikh Shibli, he waits to see who is this man that's saying, Labbaik la Sharik Labbaik. He looks, 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 and he spots the man. He calls him, Brother, come here. Sheikh Shibli says, Brother, what are you saying in Tawaf? The person says, I am saying, Labbaik, La Sharika Labbaik, that there is none worthy of worship with Allah, and oh Allah, I am present. So Sheikh Shibli asked this person, Brother, do you hear anything extra? Because I can hear something. I want to know if you can hear anything extra. So the person says, Yes, I do. The person says, I hear a voice saying, La Labbaik, you're not accepted in my court. You're not accepted in my court. So then Sheikh Shibli says, so Why are you cutting on? Why are you saying, Labbaik, La Sharik, Labbaik, Labbaik, La Why are you cutting on? What's the point? If you are hearing, I thought I was only the one hearing this, but you're hearing this too. So why are you cutting on? Now listen to the reply of this man, which is for me and you. This man says to Sheikh Shibli, that Sheikh, I hear this voice. That Allah is saying, you're not accepted in my court. What an ill feeling if Allah says to me and you after everything, you're not accepted in my court. What a pain that must be. Allah protect us from this pain. Allah be pleased with us. May not be the case on the day of judgment that I stand and you stand. And after everything Allah says to me and you, you're not accepted in my court. May that not be the case. That man was very fortunate that he heard that voice. So the man says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I can hear this voice coming from Allah saying, you're not accepted. Then why do you carry on? What's the point? Why do you carry on doing tawaf saying this? So the man says, do I have, do I have anywhere else to go? Do I have anywhere else to go? Do I have any other Allah that I can go to? If this Allah doesn't accept me, no Allah will accept me. If there is, there is no other Allah, there is only how many Allah? One Allah. La ilaha illallah. Only one Allah. If that Allah doesn't accept me, then I have nowhere else to go. So how can I not ask him? So this person, after saying this, he continues to do tawaf. Labbaik la sharik labbaik. And a voice says, now my servant, I accept you. Now my servant, I accept you. Now I accept you. Why? Because he knew that there is no other hope. There is no other creator. If I disobey Allah, then is there any other person I can go to to say, can you give me grant? Can you grant me forgiveness? No. Only one Allah. I only have this one Allah. So how can I ask anyone else? How can I go to someone else? So this person understood. This is what you call a true servant of Allah. That after doing wrong, he realizes... I have nowhere else to go. I have no other creator to turn to. I only have my Allah. By him recognizing this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave him. And Allah accepted him. Allah accepted his call. So who are me and you to become so despondent so quick? How can we so quickly think Allah won't forgive me? How can we ever dare think that? There is a hadith of Muslim Sharif. Jundub radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. He says, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Anna rajulan, anna, raj, anna rajulan qal. Rasulullah said, there is a man. Rasulullah gave an example. He says, Wallahu la yaghfiru allahu li fulanin. Allah won't definitely forgive him. Allah ta'ala maaf khurtanai. Khutul dila khurse, maaf khurtanai. So a person says this. Anyone, random person says, Allah ta'ala maaf khurtanai. Khutul dila khurse. How can Allah forgive that person? He drinks, he deals in drugs, he does this, he does that, she does this, she does that. Allah can't forgive that person. Allah won't forgive him. Rasulullah says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say on the day of judgment. That to that person who said that Allah won't forgive him, he's such a bad person. How can Allah forgive him? And to ourselves, how can Allah forgive me? To even think this is, this is not correct. So if we were to say, oh Allah can never forgive that person. He's done so much wrong. How can Allah forgive that act? Guess what Allah says regarding that person on the day of judgment. Allah says, وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ تَعَالَى قَالْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say on the day of judgment, مَنْ ذَا الَّذِي مَنْ ذَا الَّذِي يَتَى أَلَّا عَلَيَّ أَلَّا يَغْفِرُ أَلَّا يَغْفِرَ أَلَّا أُغْفِرَ لِفُلَانٍ Are you that person? 
Were you that person that claimed that Allah will not forgive such a such a servant? Did you say, oh Allah, he's never going to get forgiven. Abdullah is never going to get forgiven. Were you that person that said that I, Allah, will not forgive Abdullah? Were you that person that said it? Guess what Allah says? Because you made such a wrong statement regarding another. Allah says, Inni fa inni kad ghafartu li fulanin. I have forgiven that person. How dare you say this? Then Allah says, Wa ahbattu amalak and your actions because of that one statement, everything you did is, ex is wasted. Nothing is accepted in my court. How dare you say that I will not forgive my servants? So my message to you right now, I swear by Allah, if you are sincere in repentance, if you are sincere to Allah, no matter what kind of past we have, I swear by Allah, with Quran and Hadith in front of us, I swear by Allah, Allah Ta'ala can definitely forgive you if you have sincerity in your heart. Definitely can forgive you. Don't let it be the case that anyone ever says to you that Allah cannot forgive you. Till death, Allah Ta'ala will always and can always forgive you. So do not lose hope in Allah Ta'ala. Don't ever fall into this wrong misconception that Allah can't forgive. Allah forgives. But it's about, am I asking Allah or am I not asking Allah Ta'ala? So we need to ask ourselves, Ya Allah, all year goes, when was the last time I stood and I prayed, Oh Allah, please forgive me. When was the last time we sat down in the corner of the masjid and we thought to ourselves, Ya Allah, so much wrong in my life. How many times, how fake I am. When was the last time we sat down and said, Oh Allah, please just forgive me. Please just forgive me. When was the last time we did this? If there was no recent time, then let tonight be that time when me and you Make that time, we seclude ourselves. We don't think this is a night where, hey, let's go to Tesco, Asda, and let's grab ourselves a drink or two and chill together. The night is very short. We need to make that time with Allah Ta'ala. So oh Allah, I've heard regarding you. I have heard that you forgive. So if that is the case today, tonight, forgive me, O oh Allah. And Allah Ta'ala can forgive you. And Allah Ta'ala does forgive. You know, Allah, He loves a servant, Abd. Do you know what a servant is? A servant is that who recognizes his weakness. Hazrat Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha mentions a hadith in Sahih Muslim and Sahih Muslim and Sahih Bukhari. She mentions, Inna al-abda idha tarafa thumma tab. When a servant of Allah, he confesses, he realizes, Ya Allah, you know what? It's actually true. I've gone so far from you, Allah. He's got a point. He's got a point. He's saying the truth. I'm very far from you, Allah. He accepts his wrong. But yes, in front of the people, oh, oh mashallah, Hafiz sahab, Ustad sahab, Mulana sahab. But Allah knows all my sins in the darkness of the night. Allah knows my sins when, there is, when I am away from the public. Allah knows everything. But when a person accepts his wrong, oh Allah, I have done wrong. Oh Allah, I have been missing salah. Oh Allah, I have gone very far from you. And then, tab Allah. Then he does tawbah. فَقَدْ تَابَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts such repentance. Allah accepts that repentance. So now we need to really ask ourselves, where am I? Where am I going? Where am I actually going? How much of my life is according to the way of Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam? Why is it that it has to be the 15th of Sha'ban that gathers me in the masjid? Why am I not coming? Oh Allah, please help me. Do you know why we're so special? Why I'm special and you're special? Because Allah wants me and you to change. This is why Allah is allowing me to say this and Allah is allowing you to hear this. Because Allah doesn't want me and you to go to the, tonight after Isha or go our own way and not have our sins forgiven. That's why Allah has gathered us. There are some people I know, they made intention. The Ustad, Atik, I'm going, I'm going to be coming tonight. But they couldn't for whatever reason. But Allah chose me and you to come. Allah chose me and you to sit here. That is definitely a sign to say that my servant, I want you to listen to this and I actually want you to turn back to me. Don't make you one of them nights where, you know what, uh, yeah, I listened to a bayan and hey, he spoke well, he was very emotional, he was so cool, he spoke really well. No, that's not the objective. That is not the objective. My objective, I, before I came, I sat to myself after Asr, that I'm going to be going, I'm speaking to a very dear friend of mine, at the same time I'm thinking, 
Okay, so what's my objective? Why have I got some notes here? What do I want for myself at the end of this time? Before Isha Salah, before 10.45, before the night continues, what do I want before I get off this nimbar? And shall I tell you what I want? And I actually want this for yourselves also. Wallahi ladim. I have no other motive in my heart right now. Allah Ta'ala is my witness. I am sitting in the house of Allah. Wallahi ladim. I have no other thought in my heart right now except this thought that, Oh Allah, before I step down this member, I am not going to step down until I can feel that my Allah has forgiven me. That Allah has forgiven me today. Then that my new clean sheet has started. And I will be praying Isha Salah in such a state when now, when I am praying Isha Salah, I know, Alhamdulillah, I have connected to my Allah. That I'm making that turn. I'm making that change. So that's my intention before I set off. It might be that it might take two, three hours before the intention is fulfilled. So you might have to hang on with me. I might be staying till 12 o'clock. You never know until I feel satisfied with myself. So be prepared. Imam Sab might have to delay Isha Salah and Chachas might have to wait. Inshallah, that won't be the case. Allah give us all sincerity. Allah allows us all to understand what it means to turn back to Allah Ta'ala. You know, Tawbah, that repentance. Some people think repentance is this. That's not toba. That's not called dua. We've become so fashioned to think that when I'm going to turn to Allah, I'm going to raise my hands. Oh Allah, please forgive me. Allah, yes, it is humbleness. But you know, real toba is not here. Real toba is in here. It's in the heart. That when a person, he could be sitting like this. He could be sitting and pondering and in his mind and heart he is thinking, Oh Allah, I need to change my life. I actually need to change. Oh Allah, please forgive me. That is the true essence of Tawbah. That thought in your heart. How can I explain this to you further? Hazrat Musa alayhi salatu was salam at his time. This narration is from the books of history and from the books of Seerah. The hadith can be questioned in regards to its Authent, uh, authenticity but it is a great hadith worth understanding worth listening to Hazrat Musa alayhi salatu was salam no rain Alhamdulillah we have been blessed with rain no rain he gathers the people oh people drought no rain we need to turn to Allah so as is the practice of the masters of fiqh and of hadith that when there is no water, then you go out in the fields and you ask Allah, Oh Allah, please forgive us. Oh Allah, send down the rain. So Hazrat Musa alayhi salatu salam tells his people, Oh people, gather. Everyone gather together. The people gather. After gathering, Musa alayhi salam says, Everyone, be true to your repentance. We have to turn to Allah. If we all ask Allah for forgiveness, inshallah, rain will fall down. Everyone gathered. Everyone's gathered. Hazrat Musa alayhi salam, the great prophet of the time, gathered. Everyone there repenting, Oh Allah, forgive me, Allah, forgive me. Hazrat Jibreel alayhi salatu salam, he reveals to Musa alayhi salatu salam, Oh Musa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to say that amongst this gathering of the thousand that you may have, Allah is not happy with one person. There is one person only. Only one person in the gathering, Allah is not happy with him. Why is Allah not happy with him? He's a liar. He's not repenting. He's just standing there and he knows, I'm going to be doing sins later. I'm going to be doing my usual acts. He's not repenting. He's not sincere in his repentance. Because of him, I will not allow the rain to fall down. So, Hazrat Musa is informed that tell the people, make the announcement, that person who is in this gathering, who has not repented to Allah, leave the gathering. Because of you, one person, Allah is not allowing the rain to fall down. So Musa makes the announcement. Oh people, one person. There is one person amongst us. Allah is not happy with him. He has done wrong. He is not true to his repentance. Tell him to leave. 
until he does not leave, Allah will not allow the rain to fall down upon this land. Now that person, he knows. Now, now the conversation of Toba and repentance takes place. What does this person say? Not out loud. If I say out loud, Oh Allah, forgive me for this. And Imam Sahib is there. Imam Sahib is going to listen to me. He's going to hear my repentance. This person speaks to Allah. Oh Allah, I'm that person. I know. Oh Allah, I'm that person that Musa is speaking about. Oh Allah, I am that person who is not true to repentance. I am that person because of whom today you are not allowing the rain to fall down. Oh Allah, if I leave this gathering, then people will know. They'll know that, oh, because of him, he was the culprit. Because of him, no rain was coming all these days. People will know. I can't, I can't, I'm just too embarrassed. How can I leave the gathering when everyone's going to point fingers? It's only one person. It's not a group, it's just one person. And at the same time, I can't even raise my hands to say to you, Allah, forgive me. Because I'm in such a gathering where if people see me, Ya Allah, they'll recognize that, oh, he's the one, he's lifted his hands. I can't even do that. And I am sitting there, and I am standing here. Cannot go, I cannot stay, because of me the rain is not falling. Oh Allah, right now I speak to you, and I tell you that I have changed my ways. I will be sincere to my repentance. Oh Allah, forgive me. As soon as he said this, the rain fell down. Rain fell down. Now Musa alayhi salam, confused. People confused. That, huh? No one left, no one left the gathering. No one left the gathering. Why? How did the rain fall down? So the Musa alayhi salam, Ya Allah, I don't understand. I don't understand the, how you allow the rain to fall down. But no one left. You said there's one person, bad person here, that didn't repent properly. You're not happy with him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replies to Musa alayhi salam, O Musa, that very person due to whom I did not allow the, allow the rain to fall down, because of that very person, because of that very man, right now the rain has fallen down. Why? He has become my friend. He has become my friend. So now Musa alayhi salam, Oh Allah, a friend of yours. He's become your friend because of him. One person, you accepted him so much. Rain fell down. Please, show me who is this person. Allow, inform me who is this person. So I may greet him. I am the messenger of Allah. I may greet him. I may say to him, You are a repenter. What a person that due to you the rain has fallen down. Allah says, when he was a sinner and he was far from me, I did not allow anyone to know of him. So why will I now allow anyone to know of him when he has become my friend and he has turned his ways? So you see, Allah Ta'ala is sattar, the one that covers. No one knows anyone's real state. No one knows. I could sit here, pretend to be pious all night long. But I know my state and you know your state. No one knows anyone's state except for ourselves. This person realized he turned to Allah and he was forgiven. Something more than this. Another narration of Musa alayhi salam. There was a man of his time. This narration is also mentioned in the books of Sirah and regarding the people of Banu Israel and Musa alayhi salam. Sheikh Zulfikar, Damat Barakatum, he also mentions this incident. There was a man, youth. Specifically, Ashab, youth, youth like me and you, youth, very far from Allah. Allah reveals to Musa, Oh Musa, tell this specific youth, tell him that he needs to repent to me and stop going away from me and stop doing sin because I'm not happy with this person. So Musa goes to him, Look, Allah has told me who you are. You need to sort it out. You really need to stop sinning. You, you can't do this anymore. Why are you sinning all the time? The person, he is okay for a bit, he repents to Allah, and then he falls to sin again, and he continues in his old way. Musa alayhi salam, second time informed, Oh Musa, tell him again, tell him again, I am not happy with this servant of mine. I am not happy with him. He is always breaking his repentance. He is always breaking his tawbah. Musa alayhi salam to the youth, look, you really need to sort it out now. Why do you continue to discuss? Uh, displeasing Allah. Why do you continue disobeying Allah? Why are you sinning all the time? Stop it now. Allah said second time regarding you, stop it. Person, he goes well for a bit and he flops again. And he falls. 
Now Allah Ta'ala says to Musa, Musa, tell him that I Allah, I am not pleased with him anymore. I am not happy with him anymore. He has gone very far from me. So with this, now, now this is for me and you. No matter how far we may think we have gone from Allah, this reply of that youth and this conversation that this youth has, this is for me and you to put into our lives. That youth realizes, okay, so third time, now Allah said he's not happy with me. Listen to this conversation that this servant of Allah has with his creator. The servant of Allah, he goes far from the city area. He says to Allah, Oh Allah, listen to this. How he speaks to his creator. Look at how close he must have seen himself to even dare to speak to Allah in this way. This shab, this youth says to Allah, Oh Allah, have I sinned that much? Have I actually sinned that much? That my sins have become so big and so large now. I have gone away from you that many times now. Have I taken from the treasures of your mercy? Have I reduced anything from the treasures of your mercy? Oh Allah, have I sinned so much that I have filled the earth and the heavens with sin that now you have said that you have rejected me on the lips of your beloved Musa alayhi salatu wasalam? Have I gone that far from you now? That you are saying this regarding me? That I have gone very far and now I am far from your mercy? Oh Allah, is your mercy that limited for me? Is your mercy that limited that after doing all these wrongs, after going here and there, doing this and that, after everything, Oh Allah, are you still saying that I have limited your mercy, that now your mercy can't encompass my sins? Are you saying that to me, O oh Allah? If that is the case, O oh Allah, then I say to you, O oh my Creator, I confess. I take my sin and I say to you, O oh Allah, give me the sin, give me the wrongs of all of your creation. Put it on to me. Let me be the sacrifice for the rest of your creation. Put all of the sins of all of humankind and jinn kind upon me. Let me be the compensation for everyone. If you are going to punish me because I have reduced from your mercy, then allow that all of the sins of your creation are on my back now. That I do not represent one person, I represent the whole of your creation. I am not one anymore. I represent everyone. Now Allah, you may punish me knowing that I represent all of your creation. Hazrat Musa is informed. Rush to this servant. Rush to this servant. Rush to this servant of mine. And say to that servant, that, oh my servant, if you actually had filled the earth and the heavens with sin, if you had actually filled it with guna after guna after guna, and then you came to me, though you have not filled the whole earth and heavens with sin, and then after you actually came to me with the whole world full of sin, and you have made such a conversation with me, oh my servant, no, I have forgiven all of your sins, and I give you reward in return for that. I give you return, reward for that. This is the promise of Allah Ta'ala. So why? Why do we wait? Why do we wait for the 15th of Sha'ban? Every night in my life and your life should be that special moment. You see, a special night isn't the night of 15th of Sha'ban. Isn't the night of Laylatul Qadr. What do I mean? I mean that 15th of Sha'ban is not special until you make it special. How will you make it special? Oh Allah, I am using this night as an excuse to turn back to you. Laylatul Qadr, 27, 29, 21st, i'tikaf. It's not special for me and you. Until we use that night to make it special. Every night of our lives should be special. There is a hadith in Sahih Bukhari. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the last portion of the night says, Is there anyone awake that wants my mercy? I am waiting to forgive. Is there anyone wanting from me? Ask, 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 and I will give. Every night this announcement is made. Every night this announcement is made. Every night is special. And you know what night is special for me and you? That we can put on our diary. The night when me and you repented and we turned back to Allah. That's night. For me and you, that's my Laylatul Qadr. For me, that's my Shabai Barat. For me, that's my most blessed night. Where I became the friend of Allah. Where I turned back to Allah and I said, you know what? I'm not going to. Hazrat Hakim Akhtar Sab, Rahmatullahi Alayhi says, 
a very beautiful poetry of his uh, Silsila Mashaykh. He mentions Jo Sobar Tore wa Sobar Jore. That person who breaks the connection with Allah, I sinned, quickly realizes, Oh Allah, please forgive me. I didn't mean it. Please Allah, forgive me again. He falls again, quickly realizes, Oh Allah, please forgive me, forgive me. Oh Allah, I didn't mean oh, Emotions took over, pride took over, nafs took over, desires took over. I couldn't do it, Oh Allah, please forgive me again. That is the connection a person reaches when he is sincere in repentance. When you have tasted repentance once, Wallahi lazim, you'll want to taste that time after time after time. That I want my Allah to be happy. I want that emotion where I am crying to Allah and I know Allah has forgiven me. We need that. So tonight is the 15th of Sha'aban. The 15th of Sha'aban is not special until we make it special. So before we leave the masjid, before Fajr time, please, I humbly request you, take out some time. Forget everyone. Forget the phone, forget WhatsApp, forget everyone and everything. Either in the masjid, and if you cannot find the environment in the masjid for yourself, then go back home, in your room. Take the light off. Just think for once. Oh Allah, it's true. I need to make a change. I need to change my life. Enough is enough. How can I carry on doing this? How can I carry on doing this? We need to talk to Allah. Don't ever mistake dua to mean dua is this. Dua is when you talk to Allah. It's not mere words. It's not mere supplications. The Imam Sab, he understands the Arabic language. So when he says, Oh Allah, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana. He knows he is asking Allah for the goodness of this world and the hereafter. If me and you don't know Arabic, then speak to Allah in English. Speak to Allah in French. Speak to Allah in Bengali. Whatever language suits you, you turn to Allah. Oh Allah, asnamari mafkhuru. Oh Allah, please forgive me. That is worth more to Allah than that parrot who just repeats, Oh Allah, Allahumma khfirli, Allahumma khfirli, without any thought. If I say in Bengali, and I know I'm being true, Oh Allah, asnamari mafkhuru, Oh Allah, ami guna khursi, Allah, mari mafkhuru. That has more emotion than that person who sits there saying, Allahumma firili, Allahumma firili, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. No emotion, no heart. You need to turn to Allah with your language. So for me and you, it's, oh Allah, you know what? I've done wrong. Oh Allah, forgive me. Allah, have mercy upon me. Allah, please, just forgive me. That's how we need to speak to Allah Ta'ala. May Allah allow you so that we understand this. I want you to say the final hadith. This is a very, very beautiful hadith. And this is a hadith Qudsi. A hadith Qudsi is such a hadith where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. It is not verses of the Quran, rather it is ghayr matulu, which means it is not recited, so it is hadith Qudsi where Rasulullah says Allah is speaking to his servants and Allah wants to say something. This hadith is mentioned by Anas radiyallahu ta'ala anhu in the sahih of Imam Tirmizi rahimahullahu ta'ala. This hadith Anas radiyallahu ta'ala anhu says that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. Who said it? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this hadith is hadith Qudsi that Rasulullah says who said it? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said this. So this is in the first person. Allah is speaking to every single person right now. I want you to listen to this final hadith. Last hadith. Last hadith. Listen attentively please. Listen very attentively and I want you to listen and whilst listening, I want you to know that it is Allah speaking to you. Don't look around. It's not Allah speaking to Abdullah. It's not Allah speaking to Imam Sab. Allah is speaking to Atik. Allah is speaking to me and you. Personal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya bana Adam, all the children of Adam, all oh my creation, Ya bana Adam, إِنَّكَ مَا دَعَوْتَنِي وَرَجَوْتَنِي Oh my servant. It's first person and Allah is speaking to one person. It is wahid mutakallim. Allah speaks to one person. Ka. Not kum, not kuma. One person. So Allah is speaking direct to every single person who listens to this hadith, who reads this hadith. It is directed towards you. Not towards me. Directed towards every single individual in his own way. 
Allah says, Ya ibn Adam, إِنَّكَ مَا دَعَوْتَنِي وَرَجَوْتَنِي O my servant, if you turn back to me, دَعَوْتَنِي You say, O Allah, please forgive me. وَرَجَوْتَنِي And you have hope, and you turn back to me. غَفَرْتُ لَكَ عَلَى مَا كَانَ فِيكَ O my servant, I forgive every single thing that you have done. وَلَا أُبَالِي And you know what? I forgive it, and I'm not even going to ask regarding it. Forgiven. Forgiven and forgotten. Finished. The ulama, whilst commentating on this hadith, say, big question. Question is, Allah says, وَلَا أُبَالِي I don't even care, I'm not going to ask you. But isn't there Quran verse and hadith that say Kiramun Katibin? They write down our uh, misdeeds and our good deeds. They've written it down. The ulama explains saying, when Allah says, Wala ubali, I'm not going to ask you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He erases it from the book without the knowledge of the angels. It's gone. Completely gone. Yabn <coughs> Adam. لَوْ بَلَغَتْ ذُنُوبُكْ عَنَانَ السَّمَاءِ All the children of Adam. Now this is getting a bit more now. A person who feels like I'm a very big sinner. If your sin reaches to the heavens, to the anana sama, you're hitting the boundaries of the heavens. You've gone very far. Far from Allah Ta'ala. ثُمَّ اسْتَغْفَرْتَنِي After all them sins, you say, Astaghfirullah, oh Allah, please forgive me. What does Allah say in return? غَفَرُتُ لَك I forgive you وَلَا أُبَالِي I'm not even going to ask you all about it. Forgiven. Gone. يَا بْنَ آدَمْ إِنَّكَ لَوْ لَقَيْتَنِي بِكُرَابِ الْأَرْضِ خَطَايَا Oh, the children of Adam. If you meet me, you meet me with the whole world full of sin. Whole world full of sin. Whole world full of sin. The sin after sin after sin after sin. Disobedience after disobedience after disobedience. ثُمَّ لَقِيتَنِي لَا تُشْرِكُ بِي شَيْئًا And you come to me, but whilst doing all this disobedience, you still have iman. You know that there is none worthy of worship but Allah. لا إله إلا الله There is none worthy of worship but Allah. You have this iman in your heart. You know. I know, you know, Allah is our only one creator. La ilaha illallah. What does Allah say? You come to me, earth full of sin, you have done so much wrong, but you still believe in me, and you have hope in my mercy, and you're going to ask from me. Allah says, La ataytuka bikura biha maghfira. I return back to you, and I come to you with the whole world full of forgiveness. Everything forgiven. Everything forgiven. Everything forgiven. So my final message to everyone today is that please, don't just make this another bayan. You see, alhamdulillah, I have not sat here to speak to you, to lecture you. Rather, I sat here for my own benefit. Well, I may turn back to Allah. Because I know my own state and you know your state. So my humble request, wallahi lazim, nothing more is please, do not waste this night. Do not waste this opportunity where others are crying to Allah, someone else is crying, and you see them and automatically your tears start to come out. Please don't waste this night. Please don't. Don't waste this opportunity. It's possible that today we stay all the way awake till Fajr, but then tomorrow we sleep after Isha and we only wake up for Fajr. So everyone, the environment is there. Alhamdulillah, people are coming to the masjid, people will be awake. So please don't waste this opportunity. Do not waste this opportunity. And don't ever think that you, are that, so, that you are so far from Allah that Allah can't forgive you. Allah can forgive and Allah does forgive. So what do we need to do? Number one. Do you know sins? When you say, oh yeah, it's just a sin. We need to change, number one, this terminology. It's not a sin. I'm sorry. It's not a sin. Any sin, major, minor, do not call it sin. Do you know what the new phrase should be? Don't say, oh, I just did a sin. No. Say, I disobeyed Allah Ta'ala. That's what you need to say. I disobeyed Allah. I went far from Allah. My creator, I disobeyed him. You know, in front of your father, if someone smokes or someone is involved in haram, 
it's too hard in front of your father, you can't do these things. Oh, dad's going to shout, you know, how, how can I dare even do that in front of my father? If that is our father, then what should our relationship be with Allah Ta'ala? How should our relationship be with Allah? In front of the people, so easy, so easy. That, oh, you know, in front of my father, my mother, my friends, no one knows the sins that I do. No problem. But in the darkness of the night, in our own private lives, when we're by ourselves, when we're with our other groups and other people, Allah knows. Allah knows that I'm in that sin. Allah knows that I'm wasting my life. Allah knows that I'm disobeying Him. We have so much fear of the people. What about that Creator that we really need to fear? What about that Allah who has given me and you everything? What about Him? So don't call it sin anymore. Call it, I have disobeyed Allah. I need to turn back to Allah. And make that the point. Make that the point. And whatever situation you're in, always, always have hope in Allah. Thirdly, please, do not leave today. Do not leave this gathering. Do not leave after Isha without having that moment where you have talked to Allah, where you have spoke to Allah and said, Oh Allah, please forgive me. Oh Allah, I need to turn back. Try it. You see, sometimes even when you're fake, you know, Allah is so merciful. Sometimes you're so fake. Sometimes you just pretend to cry. Even Allah loves that. Even Allah loves that also. So if you can't mm, cry, then just pretend. Just go home. Just pretend to cry to Allah. See how that changes for you. Try. Just talk to Allah Ta'ala. And I beg you, don't go back with this thought that, oh, another bayan, okay, finished, whatever. No, I'm sorry. That's not my objective either. You can't go back with that kind of thought. It's not just a bayan, I'm sorry. It's a reality check for me and for every single person. For everyone. For Hafiz Saab, for Ustad Saab, for Maulana Saab, for Haji Saab. Everyone. Everyone has to re- repent. Everyone has to turn back to Allah. Everyone has to turn back to Allah. Allah covers our sins. Doesn't mean that we are not sinning. Doesn't make us immune from sin. Every single person has to turn back to Allah. But please, take my humble appeal. Really focus. Don't waste this night. Please. The month of Ramadan is coming. Everyone knows. Before the month of Ramadan comes, make it so that you've already cleared your sheet. You're already connected to Allah. And if you do fall within the next 15 days within Ramadan, no. Get up again. I've done wrong. Stand up. Toba. Ask Allah for forgiveness and carry on again. It starts again. Don't let shaitan ever make you feel like, Oh, I've done so much sin. What's the point? What's the point? There is a point. You are the servant of Allah. You are deserving of His mercy also. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow me and you to understand this. One final thing. And this is something that I like to mention wherever I go. And let me tell you something. Hafiz sahab, Imam sahab, Mawlana sahab, they have not told me to say this. So do not think it's from, coming from them. But it's my humble appeal to the people of Ashton Jamia Masjid. And that humble appeal is, please, I beg you, make sure you benefit from your teachers and from your Imam subs. Please, benefit from them. My respected teacher says that if you come to Salah early, try to sit next to the Imam before Namaz starts. Because he is such a person who is connected to Allah, piety will brush off. Just sit next to him. Please take opportunities. Do not ever look at your Imams, your Huffad in a wrong sort of light. Respect them. Give them their honor. They have so much knowledge. They have so much understanding of deen. You need to benefit from them. You know, sometimes we think, oh, our speakers come from all the Ustad Atik Sab. I've come today, finished. Your ulama are here. Benefit from them. And this is a very wrong misconception. There are many people that think, I am very close to deen. I spend time in the path of Allah. I spend time in acquiring knowledge. If you have disrespect for your ulama, Wallahi lazim, you are more further away from Allah than you could ever imagine. Mark my word. I swear by Allah, if you do not have respect for the ulama, you are very far from Allah Ta'ala. Keep that point in mind also. Connect yourselves to the people of knowledge. Connect yourselves to the Ahlul Ilm, the people who have the Quran. The Imam, great scholars of the past, they would find it disrespect to even put their feet towards the Hafiz of the Quran. How? In his heart, he has the book of Allah. How can I have disrespect for this person that I put my feet towards him? We need to also keep these things in mind. You need to ask dua from your imam. 
You have to ask dua from your hafiz sub. You have to ask them for dua. So whilst we are trying to mend our ways, one very good way to help us is to connect ourselves. Connect yourselves to the ulama. Connect yourselves to the pious servants of Allah. And things become very easy. Whenever opportunity comes for bayanat, for speeches, make sure you're the first one to go. Do not ever become deceived by your own actions. Don't ever believe that I am very close to Allah because I spend time in the path of Allah. I spend time studying. No, that is not enough. A person needs to spend time in the company of the highest servants of Allah. So today, before I get off the member now, nearly Adhan time, I'm going to ask you for one appeal. And the only action that I'm going to require from you is that if you are going to support me in this appeal, I want you to raise your hands with me. And the appeal is that every single person sitting here, that they will promise me, I will promise myself also, that before tonight ends, that if I have not already done so, then I will make it a point that I will turn back to Allah. So for this, I want you to repeat after me. And if you are true in your repeating, and you are sincere, then I will say something else to finish off the cherry on the cake. Repeat after me. The repeat is, say, I have repented. O oh Allah, I have confessed to my sins. O oh Allah, please forgive me. O oh Allah, please forgive me. O oh Allah, Please forgive me. I'm sorry for disobeying you. Oh Allah, forgive me. Oh Allah, make this moment, that very moment, when I turn to you and I become a true, obedient slave. Oh Allah, accept my dua. Now I want to say to you, I swear by Allah, if everyone is true to what they have said, then Wallahi Lazim, if you are true to your conditions, then as is the condition of forgiveness, I swear by Allah, if you are true, then you have been forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So will everyone make an opportunity to make the most of this night? Will you? If so, raise your hands with me. That I will make this night, you have to repeat one more time, I will make this night special for me. Tonight, is special for me because I am going to make Allah happy. May Allah accept everyone. Jazakallahu khayran. Subhanallahi wa bihamdihi. Subhanallahi ladheem. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayh. Wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi l'aliyy l'azim. Wa bifadli subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun. Wa salamun ala al-salim. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alim.